light refraction is responsible for some intriguing visual effects you can observe on a daily basis. Whenever light passes from one transmitting material to another, refraction could occur. This lesson will discuss that effect in depth. So let's start by firstly looking at the transmitting materials and the refractive index. If we take a ray heading out from the sun, we know light is the fastest thing there is, with a whopping speed of 300 million meters per second in vacuum. It reaches Earth in about 8 minutes. As the ray gets closer to the atmosphere, it passes through air, which is a transmitting material with about the same speed as in vacuum. However, as the ray continues to travel to the surface of water on Earth, which is another transmitting material, the speed will decrease considerably to 225 million meters per second. It is observed from experimental evidence that the speed of light is different in different transmitting materials, as shown in the diagram. The general rule of thumb is that as the transmitting material's density increases, the speed of light is going to decrease. Now I want you to think of this effect in terms of the wave speed equation, which says that the speed of a wave equals the frequency times the wavelength. As we know, light is comprised from an electric field oscillating in a transverse pattern upwards and downwards, and a magnetic field oscillating in a transverse pattern also, however sideways as shown. When this wave passes from one transmitting material to another, such as from air to glass, the wavelength is going to decrease. As a result, and looking at the wave speed equation, the speed is also going to decrease. Keep in mind that the frequency remains constant. If the frequency in air was 2 Hz, which means 2 cycles were completed in 1 second, then the frequency in glass will also remain 2 Hz. Next on our list is the refractive index, which is just a comparison ratio between the speed of light in vacuum with the speed of light in a certain medium. Now the formula for refractive index, abbreviated by the letter N, is the speed of light in vacuum divided by the speed of light in a medium. Let's take an example and find the refractive index of glass. The speed of light in vacuum is 300 million meters per second, divided by the speed of light which is 200 million meters per second, you get a refractive index of 1.5. Note that the refractive index is a unitless quantity because we are basically dividing speed by speed. The meters per second cancel with the meters per second. For our example of glass, this value just means that the speed of light in vacuum is 1.5 times faster than that of glass. Now let's compare the refractive index of different transmitting materials. Look at the following list. As you can see, as the density of the material increases, the refractive index also increases. It has a high value of 2.42 in diamonds and of course a value of 1 in air because the velocity or the speed of light in air is about the same in vacuum. So once you divide the same values, you get 1. That was the end of the first part of this lesson. So let's go to the second part and try to find out the meaning of refraction in accordance to what we just studied. We will use the following items to explain refraction. If the laser emits a light ray towards the glass at an angle, and this will be our incident ray, the ray will not continue in a straight path, however it will deflect from its path as shown. The ray traveling in glass is called as the refracted ray, and this whole effect is called as refraction. So to define refraction, it's the phenomena of light being deflected by passing obliquely. Now obliquely means passing at an angle, through an interface between one transmitting medium and another of varying density, such as in this example from air to glass. Now to construct Refraction, you need the normal line, which is a line 90 degrees to the surface as shown. And from that normal line, we are going to measure the angle of incidence from the incident ray to the normal line and the angle of refraction, which is from the refracted ray to the normal line as shown. I want to stress on the idea that refraction only occurs if the light going through the interface between two mediums is passing obliquely at an angle, there must be an angle of incidence more than zero. If the angle was zero, 
which means the laser was directly hitting the surface as shown the light ray is hitting the surface as shown then the light will just continue without any refraction however it will definitely move slower okay to explain the effect of refraction I want you to look carefully at this diagram now it says over here that refraction happens because the wavelength of the ray starts to gradually change at the interface and this is due to the fact that the ray obliquely hits the surface so let's see what's happening to the wavelength as those waves going towards the uh, interface between air and glass now as you can see the last wave the wave front over here part of it is in air and part of it already entered glass the part that enters glass will experience a decrease in wavelength as we saw earlier so we can tell that part of the wave front is in air and the other part is in glass this means that one part of it is traveling faster than the other and this will cause it to deflect watch as the wave keeps on progressing forward more of it goes towards the glass and we get more deflection as it continues again this is what's happening until the whole wave front is in glass now the wave will just travel in the new path it formed to emphasize on the idea that refraction only occurs if the ray hits the interface obliquely at an angle look at the following diagram if the incident ray had an angle of zero we know it will not refract but just slow down this is because at the interface all of the wave fronts decreases its wavelength at once and no gradual change as in the previous case so watch it over here in air it has a large wavelength but as it comes to glass all of it suddenly has a experiences a decrease in wavelength next on our list is to look at the types of refraction and Snell's law there are two types of refractions that you need to be aware of the first one is when the light ray goes from a low density medium to a high density medium or we can say from a medium of high light speed to a medium of low light speed such as from air to glass in this case the refracted ray is going to deflect towards the normal and the angle of incidence would be more than the angle of refraction as shown over here now we have Snell's law which can calculate the refractive index based on those angles as you can see over here the law says that the refractive index equals sine i over sine r i stands for the incidence angle and r stands for the refracted ray now the other case the other type of refraction is when the light ray travels from a high density medium to a low density medium such as from glass to air or we can say from a low light speed medium to a high light speed medium in this case the refracted angle would be more than the incidence angle and this is because the refracted ray deflects away from the normal now you need to adjust Snell's law for this case and Snell's law would be 1 over n 1 over refractive index equals sine i over sine r let's look at the ways we can calculate refractive index we know we can calculate it using the speed of light in a vacuum compared with the speed of light in a certain medium or instead of using speeds we can find it using angles using Snell's law and we have to identify which case is it is it going is the ray going from low density to high density mediums or the other way around let's look at an example to see how those equations work together it says over here that the speed of light in glass is 200 millimeters per second and we are required to find the value of angle X now over here this is the case where light is traveling from a high density medium to a low density medium from glass to air so if you have an angle of incidence of 30 degrees definitely the angle of refraction must be higher than that now first thing we need to do is find the refractive index 
and we can do that using the speeds of light. We know the refractive index is the speed of light in air or vacuum divided by the speed of light in glass. So 300 million meters per second divided by 200 million meters per second, you get the refractive index of glass, which is 1.5. Now we can use this refractive index to find the angle. So we have to identify which case is this. As we said, it's going from high density medium to low density medium. So the formula should be 1 over n equals sine i over sine r. By replacing the values, we get 1 over 1.5, which we just obtained, equals sine 30, the angle of incidence, divided by sine r. By cross multiplication, we get that sine r equals 1.5 times sine 30, which equates to 0 0.75. From here, we can find r by taking the inverse sine. We take sine to the other side of the equation. It becomes the inverse of sine. In your calculators, you use shift sine to get the answer. So inverse of sine of 0 0.75, and you get an angle of 49 degrees. This uh, coincides with what we already know. Definitely the angle of refraction is more than the angle of incidence. So finally, let's look at some of the real life examples of refraction and another effect which is called as dispersion. The pictures you see are examples of light refraction. On the left picture, notice how the dog's legs appear smaller in size compared to the overall dog size. This is because the legs are in water, which is a transmitting material, and as the light comes out from the legs towards the camera or your eyes over here, as they come out, they hit the interface between the water and air at an angle, which causes light refraction, and the image gets distorted. The picture to the right is also another example of refraction where the light ray was incident on a glass rectangular prism which caused it to deflect its path. Let's look at a more detailed example. When a pencil is inserted inside a glass of water, it appears weird and off position as shown. Now when we take a greater look at what's happening and follow the path of light rays coming from the sharp end of the pencil, so this is one light ray going refracting towards the eye, another light ray refracting also towards the eye. This is what we would observe. The light ray hits the interface between water and air and refracts towards the eye. Now the eye does not know the light ray is refracted. It assumes they came from a straight path. So if we extend the lines as shown over here, the image would appear to be coming from a different location. And that's why it's a virtual image. The light rays appear to be coming from a position where they are not really coming from that certain location. So make sure the next time you go fishing, you aim at lower than what you can see. Finally, the last thing in today's lesson is dispersion. Now dispersion is the phenomena when white light disperses or we can say spreads into a range of colors, the spectrum of colors, by using a triangular prism as shown. So let's look at what's happening. If this was our triangular prism and to the left of it you have a white light source, in front of the source there is a slit that only allows one light ray to pass through. Now this is white light ray and we know white is a mixture of all colors. It contains all wavelengths of light from violet which has a wavelength of 400 nanometers to red which has a wavelength of 700 nanometers. Now what happens is that they are going to refract at different angles. For example, red will show least refraction, then orange, then yellow, then green, then light blue and dark blue, and finally violet. As you can see, since red had the largest wavelength, it experienced the least refraction. Violet on the other hand has the smallest wavelength, 400 nanometers, which caused it to refract the most. 
Similarly, this effect would continue after the rays leave the glass prism into air and more dispersion would be observed, more spreading of light as shown. Thank you for watching. That was the end of our lesson. I hope you enjoyed every part of it. Surf the channel for more lessons, experiments and past year questions. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share.